Nice topic is called repairing the bridge. Repairing the bridge. That is tonight's topic, repairing the bridge. The way for us to understand how to repair the bridge, there's three steps that we need to identify when repairing the bridge. Okay, the bridge is a crack. The bridge is a crack. That's what a bridge is, a crack. Okay, so that's what tonight's topic is going to be about. Okay, what is a bridge? Okay, let's just get some definitions real quick. Um, let's get some definitions. All right. Is that the definition of breach? Now, an act of breaking or failing to observe a law, agreement, or code of conduct. Okay, we want the second definition. The second definition is the one that we want to look at. Is that second definition of breach? A gap in a wall. A what? A gap in a wall. So it says a gap in a wall. Come on. Barrier or defense. So a gap it's, in a wall, barrier or defense. Go ahead. Especially one made by an attacking army. So now a bridge is a gap. So let's read the synonym. Synonyms. Break. Break. So a bridge is a breaking, okay? When the wall is cracking, that's a bridge. Go ahead. Rupture. Rapture, come on. Split. A split, a split, that's a bridge, come on. Crack. A crack, a crack. So a bridge is a crack, you know? Fracture. Fracture, read. Rent. Rent. Okay, come on. Rift. A rift. Read on. Opening. Mm -hmm. Gap. Gap. Hole. Read. Fissure. Fissure, come on. Cleft. Read. Aperture. Aperture. So now, a bridge, a bridge, there is a split, a break, a hole, a gap, a fracture, a rent. So we're going to be going over how to repair the rapture, the break, the split, the crack, the fracture, the opening, the gap, the hole, the fissure, the cleft, the aperture. So that's what we're going to be going over this night. Okay? Repairing the bridge. So we need to be able to go into understanding what it means to repair the bridge. Okay? Watch this. Give me, give me the book because a bridge, a bridge, as we just read the definition, the, the synonym, the split, the crack, we need to be able to, uh, to repair the bridge or the cracks or the split, the fracture in our life. That is what we need to do. That's what this whole movement is about. Repairing the bridge, the split, the crack, the fracture, the rent in our life. In order for you to repair it, you must identify the crack. You must identify the bridge. Okay? Watch this. Um, give me the book. Give me the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28. Come on. But let a man examine himself. But what? But let a man examine himself. Read. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Mm -hmm. Read that again. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Read. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthy, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. So now, not hold on, hold on, wait, 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 wait. Okay, read the verse one more again, verse 28. Read the read verse 28 again. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28. Come on. But let a man examine himself. But let a man examine himself. Go ahead. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. So now the most that God is saying, um, 
He says, but let a man examine himself. Let a man examine himself. So in order for you to be able to repair the breach or the crack in your life, you need to be able to sit down and examine yourself. You must examine the crack, the breaches, you understand, the breach, the split, the breaking in your life. You have to sit down and do that. That's why it says, so let, but let a man examine himself. You will not be able to repair the crack, the breach, okay, the fracture, the rent in your life if you don't sit down and examine it. That's not going to happen. Okay, read that again, verse 28. The book of First Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 28. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. The, this is the Apostle Paul in the Spirit of Christ commanding us, saying, but let a man examine himself. The only way you are going to be able to repair the breach that's split in your life, you need to sit down and examine. You understand? You need to examine it, because if you just ignore it, the crack or the breach will get bigger and bigger. You understand? It will get bigger and bigger up to a point where nobody will be able to do anything to help you to fix it. You understand? That's why the scripture says what it says, but let a man examine himself. Watch this. First, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Read that. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Read. Examine yourselves. What did he say? Examine yourselves. There's that word again. Examine yourself. Examine. This is a commandment right here. Examine yourself. Go ahead. Examine yourselves. Whether ye be in the faith. Whether you be in Christ. We're going to we're gonna break down this verse this day. Go ahead. Prove your own selves. You must prove your own selves. Come on. Know ye not your own selves? Uh -huh. How that Jesus Christ is in you? Except ye be reprobates. So now, we need to understand, the scripture says we must examine ourselves. The first point to repair, you must sit down and examine yourself and prove your own self. Okay, let's get the definition of the word examine. Okay, read that. The definition of examine. Mm -hmm. Verb. Inspect someone or something thoroughly in order to determine their nature or condition. Read that again. The definition of examine. Inspect someone or something thoroughly in order to determine their nature or condition. It says inspect. To inspect, you must sit down and inspect, meaning investigate. Okay, inspect someone or something. That means you have to sit down he says, thoroughly, in order to determine their nature or condition. So guess what? Each and every one of us, we have to sit down and thoroughly examine, you understand, to determine the nature of the crack, the nature of the breach, or the condition, how, be, how bad it is, how bad is the situation. You need to sit down and do that. A lot of us, when we come into this truth, we don't want to do that. But yet, we want the breach to be what? We want the breach to be repaired, but you don't want to sit down and thoroughly examine and thoroughly investigate the nature of the problem and the condition of the problem, the root cause, you understand, and the extent of the problem. Because it takes, it takes laboring, it takes work to do that. That means you have to sit down and actually do some things. You can't sit down and fold your arms and say, oh, well, it's been like this for as long as I can remember. There's nothing I can do about it. No, that means that is the spirit of what? That's just an excuse. That's just an excuse. You are, you are expecting manna to fall from heaven to make all your problems go away. That's not going to happen. That's why the Lord is using the word examine. To examine means you need to investigate. You must sit down and investigate this thing. Okay, read that definition again. The definition of examine inspect someone or something thoroughly in order to determine their nature or condition in order to do what in order to determine their nature or condition in order to determine their nature or condition let's read let's read the synonyms now of the word examine synonyms 
inspect inspect you must sit down and do an inspection of the bridge how big is it you understand what is it going to take for me to repair this bridge go ahead survey survey do a survey go ahead scrutinize you must scrutinize the problem set okay let's click the word scrutinize okay read that definition the definition of scrutinize mm -hmm. verb examine or inspect closely and thoroughly it says examine or inspect closely and thoroughly that takes diligence that takes discipline that takes consistency in order for you to scrutinize a problem because the, the bridge is going goes into our cell it goes into the level that is in our spirit that's what the bridge is that's what the split is that's what the crack is the sin or sins in our life that the lord is commanding us to sit down and examine them okay okay let's go back to the word examine okay we read scrutinize read that read the next one look into you must look into investigate yes. investigate you must sit down and investigate okay investigate read the definition of the word investigate the definition of investigate mm -hmm. uh, carry out a systematic or formal inquiry to discover and examine the facts of an accident allegation etc so as to establish the truth you see that thing so as to establish the truth it is carry out a systematic or formal inquiry to discover and examine the facts of an incident okay an incident allegation etc so as to establish the truth you need to invest thoroughly investigate what is the thing that i'm in the midst of that i can, that i need to fix you must sit down and investigate yourself a lot of us we don't want to do that because you are afraid to find out what you are you are afraid to discover what you are because a lot of you you don't want you 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 are afraid that you're not going to be able to handle what you find but the 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 worst thing is not being able to find out what's sitting down there in your spirit that's the worst thing and then when it pops out it's like it just came out of nowhere i don't know because you didn't sit down to investigate that's why the lord says examine yourself scrutinize investigate the situation you understand investigate the thing why do i do this stuff there? why do i do things like this why do i make these type of decisions why do i think like this you have to sit down and examine yourself that is why that's why the bible is using words like invest i mean examine you must examine the situation okay um second corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 again second corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 read really? examine yourselves uh -huh. whether you be in the faith prove your own selves read really? know ye not your own selves how that jesus christ is in you except ye be reprobate except ye be reprobate examine yourself whether you be in the faith whether you be in christ okay whether you be in the faith give me that uh, give me the book of revelation 14 verse 12 whether you be in the faith revelation chapter 14 verse 12 read really? here is the patience of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of god and the faith of Jesus. You see that thing? They keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So it says, examine yourself whether you be in Christ. Whether you be in Christ. Watch this. This is the job of Christ. So you can examine yourself. Watch this. Give me the book of Matthew chapter 4. In Matthew chapter 4. Okay. Matthew chapter 4. And verse... Uh, Verse 16. Matthew chapter 4, verse 16. Watch this. Matthew chapter 4, verse 16. Mm -hmm. The people which sat in darkness. The people that did what? Great, the people which sat in darkness. The people which sat in darkness. They sit in darkness. The darkness goes into sin. They were what? They were in the midst of sin. They had breaches. They had 
they had a breach or a split or a crack in their life. Go ahead. The people would sat in darkness, mm -hmm. saw great light. They did what? Saw great light. They saw great light. Come on. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. Light is sprung up. So that light is talking about Christ. You understand? Is talking that light is talking about Christ. Read that again. Matthew chapter 4, verse 16. Come on. The people which sat in darkness mm -hmm. saw great light. Right. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. Watch this. Give me Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. Mm -hmm. The people that walked in darkness. The people that walked seen... hold on. The people that walked in darkness, the same thing we just read in Matthew. Come on. The people that walked in darkness mm -hmm. have seen a great light. They've done what? Have seen a great light. Have seen a great light. Come on. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, mm -hmm. upon them hath the light shine. You see that upon them had the light shine. When he says examine yourself, now go back to Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5 now. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Come on. Examine yourselves. Mm -hmm. Whether ye be in the faith. Whether ye be in the what? Whether ye be in the faith. Because whether you be in Christ, because Christ is that light. Christ is that light that shines in the dark place. He is that light. So when it says examine yourself, whether you be in Christ, because Christ is going to help you to what? To shed light. He is that light that is going to what? That is going to be able to blow your aura. To be able to what? To help you to see the problem, the cracks, the, 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 the breach in your life. He is that light that is going to be able to help you to do that. That's why he's saying examine yourself whether you be in the faith, whether you be in Christ, because if you are in Christ and Christ is in you, guess what's going to happen? He's going to be that light that will shine in that dark place, which is what? Your mind, your spirit. So you can be able to do what? To identify the split, the cracks in your life. That's why the Apostle Paul is saying what he's saying right there. Read that again, verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Chapter 13, verse 5. Read. Really? Examine yourselves, mm -hmm. whether ye be in the faith. Come on. Prove your own selves. Mm -hmm. Know ye not your own selves. Come on. How that Jesus Christ is in you. How that what? Except how that Jesus Christ is in you. How that Christ is in us. So Christ is in us. So Christ is that light that is going to work, that is going to help us to examine ourselves and to prove ourselves. He says, how that Jesus Christ is in you. He is that light that is in us. His job is to do what? Is to what? To shed light upon what? The crack that is in our lives, the breach that is in our lives, the split, the rapture. You understand? That is in us. So we may be able to identify them. Once we identify them, we begin to acknowledge that they are there and it's time to get rid of them. Okay, give me the book of Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1 and verse 77. Watch this. Luke chapter 1 verse 77. Read. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. You see that thing? To give knowledge of salvation or deliverance unto his people by the remission of their sins. Go ahead. Jump down to verse 79. Verse 79. Mm -hmm. To give light to them that sit in darkness. Come on. And in the shadow of death. Right. To guide our feet into the way of peace. You see that that's the same thing we read in Matthew. The same thing we read in Isaiah 9, verse 2. To give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. Slavery. To guide our feet in the way to guide our feet into the way of peace. Because right now, we are not living in peace. Okay? We are depressed, oppressed, 
We are crushed always. That's the state of our, that's the state of the black man and the black woman these days. Read that again, verse 79. Luke chapter 1, verse 79. Read. To give light to them that sit in darkness and, the, and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. So now let's go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves, mm -hmm. whether ye be in the faith. Wait. Prove your own selves. Come on. Know ye not your own selves, mm -hmm. how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. So now, the commandment is examine yourself, investigate. You understand? In order for you, because the, 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 the whole objective of you um examining yourself is so that you can repair the breach. That's the only reason why you are doing it. And the step to get to you repairing the breach, the step that you need to follow in order for you to thoroughly understand the sin so that you can get rid of it. I, to understand the sin, you must identify it, then you acknowledge it, then we fix it. But the identification part is very important. Because you need to understand the extent of the problem. So you can begin to understand the tools that are going to be required to get rid of this problem first, to solve it. Okay? Examine yourself whether you be in Christ. Because there is why it says whether you be in Christ. Christ is going to be the what? The solution to your problems. He's going to be the one that is going to shed light to those problems so you can begin to deal with them. Prove your own self. So when it says examine yourself, it means prove yourself. That's what it means to examine yourself. You must prove your own self. You must prove yourself. How do you prove yourself? You prove or examine yourself through Christ. If you want your problem to truly be solved, you must examine yourself through Christ because he is the solution. You understand? He is that light that is going to be shining in that dark place. Watch this. Give me the book of First Thessalonians. Okay, chapter 5, 21. It says, prove your own self. Watch this. First Thessalonians chapter 5, 21. Is that? First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. Come on. Prove all things. Mm -hmm. Hold fast that which is good. He says, prove all things. When he says prove all things, he's also, re he's also referring to you. You are those things that need to be proved. Okay, that's why it says, prove your own self. That's why the scripture says, prove all things. You are one of those things that need to be proved. Okay, hold fast that which is good. The only way you're going to prove yourself, you must, hold, you must use that, that which is good. You have to use that which is good. Give me that in 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 8. Hold fast to that which is good. Okay, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 8. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 8. Come on. But we know that the law is good. Come on. If a man use it lawfully. You see that thing? The laws of God is good. If a man use it lawfully. Meaning what? You must apply the laws of God correctly. You must, you must apply the laws of God correctly because you have, you have what? You have good understanding. That's how you're going to be able to apply God's laws correctly. But it says, but we know that the law is good. So go back, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. You know what? Go back to uh, Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians 5, 21. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. Come on. Prove all things. He says, prove all things. Go ahead. Hold fast that which is good. He says, hold fast that which is good. The only way you're going to prove yourself, you must use the word of God. You must use the spirit of Christ to prove yourself whether you be in Christ and whether Christ is in you. That's the only way you're going to be able to do it. The only way for you to identify the problem set, you need to use the spirit of Christ to do it. The spirit of Christ is this Bible. Because a lot of us, we teach on the street. Okay, we were fringes. You understand? Uh, we attend classes and all of that stuff. But guess what? 
you do all of these things, but when you examine your life, your personal life, your personal life is messed up. Your personal life is effed up. Okay? So now it's time to sit down and say, you know what? Yes. Yes, I'm teaching on the sea. Okay? Yes, I'm, um, I know how to read. Yes, I know how to do such and such. But when you examine yourself, you don't have the, you don't, you don't have the spirit of discipline. You have the spirit of slothfulness. You, are, you, you, are, you, you procrastinate. Okay? You don't follow through on the things that you, you, you're supposed to be doing. Okay, all of that stuff, those are the, those are the, the bridge, that's the bridge, you understand, that's the, that's the fracture, that's the crack, that needs to be what sticks up, you understand, you don't have your life together, that's the stuff we need to deal with, okay, it goes beyond just standing on the street corner, it's beyond that, it goes beyond just reading on the street, it goes beyond that. That's just a that's just a small um, a small drop in the amount of work that is required in order for us to be thoroughly finished unto all good works. You understand? Read that part again. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-one. Read. Prove all things. Uh -huh. First, that which is good. Now go back to Second Corinthians chapter eighteen, verse five. First, Second Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse five. Read. Examine yourselves, mm -hmm. whether you be in the faith. Come on. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you? How that Jesus Christ? How that Jesus Christ is in you? Except you be reprobate. So when it says examine yourself, whether you be in Christ, prove your own self. You need to use the word of God to prove yourself. Okay. Know you not your own selves? Everyone knows themselves. When it says, know you not your own self, it means that you know that you have a problem in this area. Okay? You have a problem in that area. So that's why it says, know you not your own self? Now that you, because in the world, you knew that this is a problem, that's a problem, that's a problem. But in the world, it was easy to find excuses on why you can't get it done. In the world, it was easy. And guess what? The world will love you. The world will say, yeah, you know, yeah, I understand and all that. But when you come into the truth, you start to realize, actually, that's not what it is. All of this is doable. I can do all of these things. The question is, will you commit yourself to doing it? Know you not your own self? Are you going to identify them now with the, with the word of God? Are you going to allow God's laws to really bring it thoroughly to life so you can really fix it? That's the question. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Romans chapter 7, verse 7. Romans chapter 7, verse 7. Read. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Come on. Hey, I had not known sin, but by the law. Uh -huh. I had not known sin, but by the law. So the only way you're going to be able to identify the breach in your life, the laws of God is the tool that you, with which you are going to use to be able to thoroughly understand the problem that you identify. The laws of God is the only way that is going to be possible. Outside of that is not going to happen. But guess what? Brothers and sisters will come in and the laws of God come out. You identify the problems in your life. But for most brothers and sisters, it ends there. They don't want to move on now to the next bit because the next part of the, the next part of the equation is where is where many brothers and sisters fall out, or that's where they get stuck. That's where they become stagnant. Okay, we're going to deal with that part. Read that again, verse 7. Romans chapter 7, verse 7. Read. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Mm -hmm. God forbid. Come on. Hey, I had not known sin, but by the law. So the Apostle Paul is letting you know the only way you can identify that breach in your life is through the laws of God, in the spirit of Christ. 
The Spirit of Christ is the only one, is the only way for you to thoroughly identify God. In the world, you know yourself, all of, but you think you do. When you come into the truth, that's when you're really going to discover yourself properly, what you are, and what is completely against the laws of God. Then you begin to do what? You begin to deal with the truth. Okay, watch this. Give me James chapter 1, verse 23. James chapter 1, verse 23. Because when you identify the breach in your life, this is how you do it. Because we read the laws of God is the way to do it. Watch this. James 1, 23. Read that. James chapter 1, verse 23. Come on. For if any be a hearer of the word mm -hmm. and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. So now it's like you hear the word, you understand? You hear the word and you get to identify, you begin to identify the problems in your life. Okay? But you don't do anything about it. That's why it says, and not a doer. You hear the word of God to help you identify the problems, the problem areas in your life, but you don't do anything about it. That's why here it says, um, for if any be a hearer of the word, everybody here hearing the word of God come out. You are identifying the problems in your life, not a doer. You don't do anything about it. You understand? It says, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. The natural face is yourself, is your sinful self, is your carnal self. The glass is the Bible. Because now you are examining yourself through the Bible. You look at what the Bible says. You see that the Lord says, thou shall not, thou shall not. And you realize that all the things that the Lord says, thou shall not, you are doing those things. Now, instead of you actually dealing with it, guess what happens? Next verse. Verse 24. For he beholdeth himself. He, he does what? And he beholdeth himself. Meaning you examine you, you, you examine yourself. You, you not necessarily examine because not, it was not a doer. You don't necessarily examine. You you identify these things. For he beholdeth himself where? In at last. The Bible. Okay, go ahead. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way. And does what? And go with his way. You 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 identify the problem through the Bible. You start to see yourself through the Bible because you start to see the things that you are doing that are wrong and what the Bible says about them. So it says, and go with his way. You leave. Okay, read on, watch this. And straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. You see that part right there? It says, and go with his way. Meaning what? You don't do anything about it. Yes, you identify the problem, but you, it says go with his way. You don't do anything about it. And straightway, meaning immediately, forget what manner of man he was. Meaning you forget the problem that you just identified that you need to fix. It says you forget what manner of man he was. You, you forget about what? About the problem that you've identified. You forget about them. Meaning what? You don't do anything about it. Immediately, you, you don't do nothing about it. And when it says straightway forget what manner of man he was, give me the book of Mark. Okay, Mark chapter 4. Let's start at verse 14. Mark 4. You know what? No. Let's just get to the point. Mark chapter 4 and verse, verse 16. Mark chapter 4 verse 16. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. They are sown on stony ground. Go ahead. Who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Immediately receive it with gladness. Watch this. And have no root in themselves. You see that thing? They have no root in themselves. Because if you are rooted, that means you are doing something about it now. When you are you have a root, that means now you have an anchor. You get to sit down and examine and, uh, and apply. You identify these things, you examine them. Okay, you examine or identify them. Once you identify them, you start to work on these things. But here it says, and have no root in themselves. He says, straightway, and straightway, he forgetteth what manner of man he was. You forget about the things 
they could just identify. Read on. And have no roots in themselves. And so endure, but for a time. Come on. Afterward, when affliction and pers- when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. You see that thing? Immediately. Immediately they are offended. That's why I said straightway. Straightway you forget it, forget it what manner of man he was. Because the Bible will bring to light the things that you are doing wrong in order for you to fix them. But immediately, once you discover those things, immediately, guess what they do? They are offended. Because a lot of the times, why? You hear the word, but you don't do it. You identify the problems. You don't do anything about them. It's because you are offended. Yes, it's because you are offended. So when you become offended, guess what happens? You start to make excuses to make yourself be better. But the problem has not gone away. The problem still exists. And a lot of times when people make excuses to make themselves feel better, they end up, they, they, they start to do things to destroy themselves even further. Because they don't want to deal with the fact that this is the problem. And I don't want to deal with it. So I'm going to do anything and everything to forget about the problem. So you make yourself forget. And the way to do it, you have to do something extreme. Because if the laws of God is the one that's coming out to us to bring to the surface the problem you have, you it will have to take some some serious level of wickedness for you to forget what you get, what you what you were what you were corrected about or what came out. It will take some serious level of wickedness for you to make yourself forget. And you will not really forget. Because the, the word of God cuts. You understand? It cuts so deep. Guess what? You're not going to be able to forget it. But the way to make yourself forget, so you think, you're going to have to do some serious damage to yourself in order for you to, to make yourself believe that actually that's not true. You're going to make a, a lot of excuses and destroy yourself in the process. You see that thing? Okay. So go back to uh, James chapter 1, verse 24 again. James chapter 1, verse 24. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, mm-hmm. and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. So straightway you will forget. Not necessarily forget, but you're going to make yourself forget by coming up with excuses. That's why he says, because of what? Because you are offended. Because you are offended. That's why it says straightway. For, uh, it says straightway. Forget it, what manner of man you are. Meaning what? You make yourself forget because of your offended. You're going to come up with excuses to do what? To make yourself forget. Or to deceive yourself into thinking that you are making yourself forget by battering yourself with the excuses that you always butter yourself with. But deep down you know this is not correct. You see that thing? Watch this. Give me that in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Wait. Right? But we all, with open face, mm-hmm. beholding, as in a glass, the glory of the Lord. The open face is that natural face. The open face is the natural face, beholding, as in a glass, the glory of the Lord. The glass is the Bible. The glory of the Lord is the Lord's statutes and commandments and his testimony. That's the glory of the Lord. Come on. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. No, 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 no. Read the verse again. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Wait. But we all, with open face, beholding, as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, mm-hmm. are changed into the same image from, the, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. He says, you see what it says? And as are changed into the same image from glory to glory. 
We are the same image, we are the same image of Christ. We are changed into the same image of Christ. Because guess what? When you behold your natural face in this glass, your job is to do what? Is to change your, your life into the life of Christ. That's the purpose of it. This bold Bible is about change. You understand? This Bible is about change. It says, I changed into the same image from glory to glory. Because when you read through the Bible, the glory of the Lord is from what? In the law and the prophets and the gospel. The whole Bible is the glory of the Most High God. So when it says the same image from glory to glory, meaning what? As you progress in this truth to deal with yourself, to changing, to killing that old man, that old woman, that's how you move from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Because the only way you're going to move from glory to glory is by the Spirit of Christ. When you struggle with, with let's say you, you struggle with lust, guess what? When you overcome it, guess what? That's a victory. Then you move from one glory to the next, to the next, to the next. You see that thing? You start to grow in the spirit. But the only way that can happen is you have to now, you have to sit down and examine it. Because if you identify it, but you're not a doer, you are just wasting your time. You identify it, but you don't do anything about it. You discover that you are an Israelite, but you don't behave or conduct yourself like one. So, are you an Israelite? No, you are not an Israelite. Okay? You, yes, you are an Israelite by blood, but your mentality is still, you are still that Negro in the world. And that is what we are trying to, to, uh, to get rid of. To get rid of that nigger man. To get rid of that nigger woman. Okay? Watch this. Give me, uh, go back to James. Go back to James. One more again. James chapter 1, verse 24. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Now, watch this. Watch this. Let me give you an example of that. Give me the book of Matthew, chapter 19. Matthew, chapter 19. Let's start at verse 16. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Come on. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, Keep the commandments. So now it says, if you enter into life, if you want salvation, you must keep God's commandments. Read on. He said unto him, which Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Come on. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. So now the Christ is going on. He is, he is rehashing the Ten Commandments to this man. Okay, come on. Verse 19, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Come on. The young man said unto him, all these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? You see what he's saying? He says, no, listen, all these things that you are saying, Christ, I've done, I've been doing them since my youth. I've been what? I have not murdered. I have not committed adultery. Okay, I have not stolen. You understand? I have not bearing false witness. I honor my mother and my father, and I love my neighbor as myself. But we're going to discover if that's true. Go ahead. Verse 21. Jesus saith unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell the, that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, mm -hmm. and come and follow me. So he's saying, if thou wilt be perfect, Go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor. So which means, uh, this man, he was wealthy, okay? Thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Watch this, go ahead. But when the young man heard this, that say, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Read that again. Matthew chapter 19, verse 22. But when the young man had heard that, say, when the young man heard that say, 
he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. So now I want to show you something. Read verse 21 again. Matthew chapter 19, verse 21. Jesus said, said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. So you see what Christ is letting this man know? Because this is letting you know. If you want that part when it says, if thou, would, if thou would be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor. Because guess what? He was among the poor. We see. He was living among them. That's the point. He was living among the poor, he says, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. So, he was living among the poor of his people, right? But look at the next verse now. Verse 22. But when the young man heard that say, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. He went away sorrowful. What was the sorrow? Jump back up to verse 19. Verse 19. Honor thy father and thy mother, mm -hmm. and thou and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's the law he did not apply. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Because he was among the poor. You understand? He was among the poor of his people. He was aware of the problem. That's why Christ is telling him in verse 21. It says, give to the poor that thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. He was among the poor of his people. He, I, he could identify the, 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 the struggles, the poverty among his brothers and sisters. He saw that, but, and he had great possessions. But the law that he did not apply was that law, the royal law. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Get, get, what was his problem? He was a greedy dog. That was his problem. He was greedy. He knew, he knew the problem, but he didn't do anything about it. Because Christ wasn't saying, sell everything that you have. Christ didn't say that. He didn't say, get rid of everything. No, no. He had great position. He had extra that he could, he could what? He could help the poor of his fellow men. You understand? His brothers and sisters, but he chose not to. He did nothing about it. He identified it. He was aware of it, but he did nothing about it because he was greedy. That was his problem. That's why he didn't follow Christ. You understand? What? Because that takes responsibility and accountability. He takes that. Okay? That's why he did what he did here. That's why he had to go. He didn't want to help his brothers and sisters. Okay? Read verse 21 again. Matthew chapter 19, verse 21. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Mm -hmm. And come and follow me. Go ahead. But when the young man heard that say, he went away sorrowful, mm -hmm. for he had great positions. He went away sorrowful because what was the sorrow? He realized that that means I have to give extra to these people, to, to my people. I have to give extra to them. What am I getting in return? But he didn't really see the reward. He didn't see it, but he was too, he was too, he was holding on to the earthly positions that he had. He didn't see the bigger picture. That's why he went away sorrowful, because he was greedy. He was greedy and covetous. But in the end, he did not want to love his neighbor as himself. He didn't do that. So, and that's the same thing today. Our people that are quote unquote rich, they see the conditions of their people, but they do nothing about it. Because of what? Because they agree. They don't love their neighbors as themselves. They don't. Because the royal law, what is the royal law say? Give me that in Leviticus 25. You're going to start at the 35. Leviticus 25, the 35. Leviticus chapter 25, verse 35. Come on. And if thy brother be waxen poor and fallen in decay with thee, then thou shalt relieve him. Thou shalt what? Thou shalt relieve him. Thou shalt relieve your brother. You shall help your brother. Love your neighbor as yourself. 
he didn't apply the royal law. Really? Yea, though he be a stranger mm -hmm. or a sojourner, Come on. that he may live with thee. Then you see that part right there? It says, when thou shall read, then thou shall receive him. Though he be a stranger, because guess what? He's poor. He does not even live, he's not even living in his own land. He does not have access to it. Today is our people don't have housing. Our people don't have good medical, good medical health. They don't have access to poor, to good education. It's poor health, poor education, poor food, poor health, poor everything. But there are those of our people that are quote unquote rich in this world. They see the conditions of our people, but they choose not to do anything about it. Because now the sorrow is, that means if I have to help my fellow men, I have to help my brothers and sisters that are struggling, what about the things that I have? The extra things that they don't even need, but they will hold on to them. Okay, so this goes to show, you see that basic law, love thy neighbor as thyself, that's a heavy thing. Because our people today, every man for himself, they don't care about their people, they hate their people. Okay. Let's go back. Okay. Let's go back to um, Matthew chapter 19. Read the 21 one more again. Matthew chapter 19, verse 21. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Mm -hmm. Come and follow me. Go ahead. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. He had great, meaning he had extra. That's why he said he had great, meaning there was extra. He had extra position, extra wealth that he didn't need, but he kept it to himself because he was greedy. Okay? They only care about their own stuff. But they will come and give good speeches to our people. You see them doing it. The politicians, you understand? The pastors, you see it. The pastors, every Sunday, they even have um, first day service, whatever. The people are just keep giving money to the congregation, to the pastor, and he's living large. Okay? And he sees the problem, but he doesn't want to share what he has with the people. He doesn't want to do that. The same with the politician. He comes to the locations, he buy, they buy everyone KFC. By the time they buy everyone to see twice two, okay, or Nando's, and the people just be voting, just be given lies, you know, fed lies every four years and all that. And then once the speeches are done, guess what they do? They go back to their mansion. They go back to those big houses that they stay in, comfortable, while their brothers and sisters are catching hell. You see that thing? Because they don't love their neighbor as themselves. They don't do that. That's what we are reading here. So it's one thing to identify the problem. I'm using these examples because it's one thing to identify the problem. But now you must do something about it. Okay? Go back to James. Watch this. James chapter 1. Let's read verse 22. James 1, 22. James chapter 1, verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, mm -hmm. and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. You see that thing? So you must be a doer, not just a hearer of the word. Yes, you identify the problem. But now, what are you going to do about it? Once you identify the problem, guess what? Your job is to sit down and fix the problem. You do something about it. But you can't just identify it and just do nothing about it. You're deceiving yourself. Because then, what? guess what you are doing? You are just living in a dream world. There's no realism to it. There's no practical aspect of, that, of the dream you've got. Okay? Watch this. Now, the second part of the process is, the first thing you to do is to do what? You must identify the bridge, which is the sin in you. You must identify the sin in you. You do that through what? Through the laws of God. The laws of God is going to give you spiritual eyes to identify and to, to identify. As you identify, you identify 
you begin to examine it. You understand? When you examine the situation, you sit down, you see how the extent of the problem, the extent of your sin. You are dealing with um, lies. You are dealing with slothfulness. You are dealing with procrastination. You understand? So on and so forth. You are dealing with health, how to eat, when to eat, how much food to eat. You're dealing with all of that. You understand? You're struggling with organizing your life. You cannot structure your day. You are, you are struggling to structure your day. You cannot follow through. Those are things, those are day-to-day -day things. Okay? You don't exercise and so forth. So on and so forth. You don't eat right. Those are the those are the cracks. Those are the sins that now that you sit down to examine, because not only do you examine, but here's the thing: as you examine and you identify what the problem is, watch this. You also must now, you must also know, you need to understand the impact of the problem not being solved. You need to also understand the impact of it. Okay? You must write 736. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 26. Whatsoever thou takest in hand, remember the end, mm -hmm. and thou shalt never do amiss. You see that thing? You're not going to fail. Whatsoever thou takest in hand, always keep the end in mind. Always remember the objective. You must understand the impact. Your, yes, you've identified the sin. Okay, I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with pornography. I'm struggling with with women, I'm struggling with men, I'm struggling with a horrid spirit, so on and so forth. Okay, now we get it. What is the impact of you not solving this, the situation? What is the impact? What, what, what impact will it have? What type of effect is this thing going to have in the future, now and in the future? Because we don't think about things like that. Because the, the deceitful mind will now I've identified it, okay. In their mind, I've solved the problem. No, just identifying it is what is the is the beginning step of the stage one. You also, while as, as part of your identification of the problem, you are examining it. As you are examining it, you get to understand the extent of it. Not only so, but you need to understand the impact. The effect it will have, because it's not going to be positive influences or positive effects. No, it's going to have negative consequences. It's going to be detrimental to your soul if you don't deal with it. That's the key. Okay, you will decay. Your soul will decay if you don't deal with it. Watch this. Now, the next, the next point is acknowledging it. And this is where brothers and sisters get stuck. You, you have identified the problem, you have examined it, you have understand the impact and all that. Now it's time to acknowledge it. Now it's time to take accountability, to take responsibility for this thing. But before you can take responsibility, you must acknowledge it. That's where brothers and sisters get stuck. They don't want to acknowledge. Because once you acknowledge, you have to admit that this is me. I have this problem. I have a I have a slothful demon. Okay. You see that I have a I have a deceitful demon. You have to be able to acknowledge that thing. As long as you are just you identify it and you just put it there, guess what? You are not solving the problem. It's only gonna now that you have it, it's only gonna get worse. Because you're gonna do things, you're gonna do destructive things. To make yourself to forget about it, to put it in the back of your mind. That's what you're gonna do. The only way for you to to really forget about it, you will have to do things that are going to be noisy enough for you to forget. Quote unquote. Watch this. Give me the book of Hosea, chapter five, verse fifteen. Hosea, chapter five, verse fifteen. Let's read it. Hosea chapter 5, verse 15. Read. I will go and return to my place mm -hmm. till they acknowledge their offense. Till they what? Till they acknowledge 
their offense. So we need to acknowledge our offense because guess what? This is a breach, this is a crack, this is a rapture. You need to acknowledge the fact that there is a rapture in your spirit. There is a rapture, you have raptures in your life. Until you acknowledge that they exist, guess what? That you're not gonna you're not gonna move anywhere. So many brothers and sisters, that's where they are stuck. That's where that, that that's where they, they, they become stagnant because they don't want to acknowledge it. They don't want to admit that this is me. That's why it's so hard for men and women when they do wrong to apologize. Because when you apologize, that means you're acknowledging the problem. You're acknowledging that you are part of the problem. Especially the women, they struggle to do that. Black women, they struggle to apologize. Because they, in their mind, when they apologize, it makes them look weak. You dumb as hell. Okay? That's the dumbest thing ever. Because a strong woman, guess what she will do? She will humble down and acknowledge, yes, this is me. I have done this thing. Brothers also, they struggle with the same thing. I have done this thing. So once you can acknowledge that you've done it, you own it. Because to acknowledge means you must own it. Own it. That's what it means to acknowledge. Own it. You must own this thing. Once you own it, guess what? You take ownership. Guess what you're going to do now? Now you begin to solve the problem. Now. You repair it. But as long as you don't take ownership of the damage that you are doing or you have done, guess what? You will never fix that problem. Never. Okay? Read the verse again. Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. Read. I will go and return to my place Read. till they acknowledge their offense. Come on. And seek my face. The face is the Bible. Me. The face is the Bible. The face of the Lord is this Bible. Read. In their affliction, they will seek me early. Now I want to show you something heavy about that verse. You see that part when it says, in their affliction? Because when you don't acknowledge it, guess what? You're, the Lord is going to afflict you. You're going to be afflicted. Meaning what? You're going to be, there's going to be more plagues that are going to come upon you. That's what he's saying. He says, in their affliction, as long as you don't acknowledge the offense and seek the Lord's face, you are going to be in affliction. The, in, the affliction, the plagues will continue to come upon you. More so now that you know, but you don't do better. You know better. You know better. You're supposed to do better. But now that you know, the Lord will plague you your, your, your mind even more. Read it again. Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. Read. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense. Come on. And seek my face. Mm -hmm. In their affliction, they will seek me early. In their affliction, they will seek me aid. That is what the Lord is saying right there. I'll give an example. Give me Hosea 4 verse 12. Watch this. Hosea chapter 4 verse 12. Wait. My people ask counsel at their stocks. That's okay. That goes into idol, idolatry. You know? And their stuff declareth unto them. Their stuff declared unto them. That's going into what? That goes into the idols that we worship. Read on. For the spirit of whoredoms had caused them to err. You see that part right there? Because, wait a minute. Because when it says their stuff and the stuff, it goes into what? Idols, idolatry. For the spirit of whoredoms had caused them to err. So because, guess what? Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 4. These whoredoms that is the Lord is talking about here is spiritual fornication. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 12. Read. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. Come on. And the invention of them, the corruption of life. He said the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. So when the Lord is saying to Hosea here, when go back to Hosea 4 and 12. Hosea, chapter 4, verse 12. My people ask counsel at their stocks. And their stuff declare it unto them. For the spirit of whoredoms hath caused them to err. Read. 
and they have gone a whoring from under their God. You see that thing? It says they have gone a whoring from under their God. Meaning what? We've went after other gods. That's I that's what that's idolatry. That's hordo. Spiritual fornication. We're spiritually fornicating when we what when we forsake the way of the Lord and go after the, the idols or the gods of the other nations and their customs and the spirit that goes with worshiping them. So guess what? We have gone or whoring after their God. Now watch this. Now remember the men are the leaders, right? The men are the leaders. The most that God is, is addressing the men first and foremost. Watch this. Next verse. Verse 13. They sacrifice upon the tops of mountains. Of mm -hmm. the mountains. When he says they sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains, is because that's what Israel was doing. We would go to the top of the mountains to worship the gods of these other nations. Ray? And burn incense upon the hills. Ray? Under oaks and poplars and elms, because the shadow of the rough is good. Yeah, the shadow meaning what? Because like, if we are under the shadow of these gods, meaning what? The benefit that goes with it, but those benefits, they are not good for us. But because we love evil more than good, in our minds, that's good. Come on. Therefore, your daughters shall commit order, and your spouses shall commit adultery. He says, therefore, your what? Read that part again. Therefore, your daughters shall commit order, mm -hmm. and your spouses shall commit adultery. So the reason why, you see what you see the consequences? Because we, the men, the leaders of Israel, we've gone, we have, we have walked after other gods. Guess what the consequence, guess what that punishment is? That's why now you see what? You see our daughters are committing hordom and our spouses are committing adultery. That's why, give me that in Leviticus 19, verse 29. Because spiritually, we are fornicating with the gods of the other nation when we are supposed to be the leaders in Israel. Physically, our daughters and our spouses will go into whoredom and commit adultery. That's why you see today there's baby mamas, there's teenage pregnancy, there's abortion. Yeah, that's why who's responsible? We are responsible because we were given the law to lead the nation of Israel. We went in, we rejected God's commandments, we went into idolatry. The consequences of that is our daughters will commit whoredom and our spouses will commit adultery. That's what you are seeing today. Okay, Leviticus 19, verse 29. Read that. Leviticus 19, verse 29. Read. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. He says, don't prostitute your, hold on, don't prostitute, do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Who's doing that? Because a lot of the times we go into this and say, yes, the sisters, the way they dress their, their daughters, the way they dress, they teach their daughters to dress like them. And if the mothers are dressed like whores, Daughters are going to do it. Yeah, that's true. As is the mother, so is the daughter. That's correct. However, there is the, the cause of this boredom and the prostitution that exists among our sisters is because we as the men, we went outside of God's laws. We worship the gods of the other nation. So the physical consequence of it is manifest in our sisters and our mothers. Read again. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 9. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Read. Lest the land fall to hold him, and the land become full of wickedness. So who's prostituting our daughters, first and foremost? The men. Who's, who, who's, causing their, who, who's causing our daughters to become whores? The men. Lest the land fall to hold him, and the land become full of wickedness. Because when no hedge is, watch this, there are 36. Verse 35. Characteristic verse 25. Read that. Ecclesiastes 36, verse 25. Read. When no hedges, then the position is spoiled. You see that thing? When no hedge is, the position is spoiled. Because the hedge is what? The hedge for the men of Israel is who? Christ. Christ is the hedge of the men of Israel. The man is the hedge for the woman. Because there's no hedge over the black man to stop going into idolatry, guess what? The position is going to be spoiled. Who's the position? 
the wife, then the children. They are the position of the men. When there are no hedges, because the hedge that's supposed to be over us is Christ. So we're supposed to follow after the footsteps of our Lord and Savior, the Christ. When we rejected that, guess what? Our, pos our position became spoiled. That's why you see the sisters behave the way that they do, the daughters behave the way that they do, because we have no hedge. We rejected our hedge, which is Christ. That's why. So yes, we read Leviticus 19, mm -hmm. the, the cause of the whoredom in the black community. Yes, the women is the one that's doing it, but the cause of the women doing it is the men. Because when we spiritually went into fornication, spiritual fornication, guess what? The Lord manifested that thing physically. Give me that in Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Watch this. Galatians chapter 5. Verse 19. Where? Now the works of the flesh are manifest. The what? Which are these. The works of the flesh are manifest. The works of the flesh are manifest. They are manifest. They will, the works of sin, they will, be, they will manifest. Meaning they are going to be seen physically. And that's why we are seeing the whoredoms in the nation of Israel that goes on. And the women, they are going all out with their whoredoms. Okay, Galatians 5, verse 19, read verse 19 again. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, mm -hmm. which are these. Come on. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, mm -hmm. deceivingness. You, you all wrong. Wait, wait, wait. Read that again, verse 19. It says, which are these. Start with that when it says adultery. 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 So guess what? That for this prostitution and the whoredom that is going on, they fall under that because we went into spiritual fornication. You understand? Come on. Adultery, fornication. Fornication. Go ahead. Sexual sin. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. The things that you see men and women do. Okay. Uncleanness. Go ahead. Lasciviousness. Evil sexual desires, and they go after those desires. You understand? They are, they what? They get themselves involved in those evil sexual lusts and desires. Why? Because spiritually, as the men, we were supposed to move and walk in the path of righteousness. We did not. The Lord said, okay, the works of your, the works of the flesh, because the law is spiritual. When we broke the law spiritually, guess what happened? When our spirit departed from the law, from the Lord, guess what the Lord did? The Lord decided to manifest the, the consequences of breaking his laws through the women. That's why the position now is spoiled because of it. Okay? So we have to acknowledge that. We have to do that. But sisters, don't get it twisted. Don't think because we have to acknowledge that. Now that gives you, now, okay, that means that they are, don't have no guilt. Oh, hell no. That's not what it means. We're just dealing with the root cause. But it doesn't absolve you. It doesn't mean you now don't need to know, you don't have to do nothing. No, no, you have to labor. You have to keep the commandment. Okay? You must keep the commandment. As the man is getting himself correct, guess what? You must be as well. You must get yourself correct. Because as the man is getting himself correct, you are not going to automatically get yourself correct by men from heaven. You actually need to apply yourself. That's when the healing process begins. We need to acknowledge. Go back to Isaiah. Isaiah 5 verse 15. Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. Come on. I will go and return to my place. Mm -hmm. They acknowledge the offense and seek my face Come on. in their affliction. They will seek me early. You see that thing? In their affliction, they will seek me early. Because when we don't acknowledge our offenses, guess what the Lord does? The Lord afflicts us. Yeah, that's what happens. The Lord brings afflictions on us. Give me that in Leviticus 26. Boy. Leviticus 26. Yeah, read Leviticus 26. Read verse 21. 
Leviticus chapter 26, verse 21. Come on. And if you walk contrary unto me mm -hmm. and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. You see that part? You see what the Lord is saying? Read that again, verse 21. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 21. And if ye walk contrary unto me, meaning what? And will not hope. Is we, when we walk contrary unto to the Lord, guess what we are doing? We don't keep the commandments. But it's not the fact, it's not just a matter of, no, I'm not keeping the commandments. Yes, you are not keeping the command, but there's something else you are doing in the place of you keeping the commandments. What are you doing? You are in the midst of sin, applying sin to your life. Your life is running on sin. That's how you walk contrary to the law. Okay, do that again. Leviticus chapter 9, chapter 26, verse 21. And if you walk contrary unto me and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. You see what the Lord, the Lord says? I'm going to bring more, seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. What is the sin in this context, the example we are using? Order, spiritual fornication. Now look at what our sisters are doing. Look at the doctors are doing. What look at our doctors are doing. It's worse than you can possibly imagine. And it's, go it's only going to get worse. Understand that? Watch this. Um, jump down. Jump down to verse 21. No, no, read verse 25. Verse 25. You know what? Read verse 23. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 23. Come on. And if ye will not be reformed by me by these things, but will walk contrary unto me. Because remember, the Lord is saying, He told us in verse 21, if you walk contrary unto me, I'm going to bring place upon you seven times more according to your sin. Now read verse 23 again. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 23. And if ye will not be reformed by me by these things, but will walk contrary unto me. If you will not be reformed, if you will not change your way, you will not change your wicked way, before you can do that, you must acknowledge your offenses. What is the offenses? The breaking of God's law, rejection of God's commandments. That's what we've done. Come on. And still do it. Verse 24. Then will I also walk contrary unto you mm -hmm. and will punish you yet seven times for your sins. Come on. And I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel, the quarrel of my covenant. You see that thing? And he says, I will bring a sword upon you. The sword is the white man, according to um, Psalm chapter 17, verse 13. Okay? He says, and I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. Because the Lord is quarreling because of the covenant that he gave unto our forefathers. And we, the children, rejected it. We, we all we do always resist the Holy Ghost as our fathers did, so do we. Go ahead. And I will bring my sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. Come on. When ye are gathered together within your cities. When ye are what? When ye are gathered together within your cities. When we are gathered together within the cities that we live in. Where, wherever, wherever the Lord has gathered us, wherever cities that we are living in, which is where the Lord has scattered us. This is what the Lord says he's going to do. Watch this. Next part of the verse. I will send the pestilence among you. I will what? I will send the pestilence among you. He says, I will send the pestilence among you. What is the great pestilence that's going on right now? The coronavirus. That's the pestilence. The Lord is sending that pestilence among us to destroy it because what? disobedience to his laws. Read on. And ye shall be del delivered into the hand of the enemy. That's some heavy stuff right there. And we are going to be delivered into the hands of our enemy. Guess what? When our people get sick, guess where they go? Into the hands of their enemy, the hospital. Now you are at your enemy's what? You are, you are at the mercy of your enemy. They give you a quote-unquote vaccine, but it kills you. You see that thing? So that's why the, he shall be delivered into the hand of your of the enemy. You know, and then today we are delivered into the hand of the enemy. You understand? 
this is this is this is what happens when we don't acknowledge. Go back to Hosea 5 and 16. Hosea chapter 5 and 16. When we don't acknowledge our offenses, the Lord says, um, in their affliction, guess what? Affliction, the Lord will bring affliction upon us. What is that? What, what, what is that affliction in this instance? The coronavirus. The coronavirus is the pestilence, according to Leviticus 23 25, the pestilence that the Lord will bring upon us. And not only will it bring, deliver the pestilence upon us, but when we, we catch the pestilence, we're going to what? We're going to be delivered into the hands of our enemies. They are hospitals, they are medicines. That's why we are delivered into their hands because of our disobedience. Because we don't want to acknowledge our offense. So that's why I always tell you, brothers and sisters, that you know, when we go to councils and all of that stuff, you have to acknowledge the stuff that you are doing. Because if you don't acknowledge it, it's gonna get worse. Yeah, that's what the scripture is saying. Hosea 5 and 15. Hosea chapter 5 is 15. Right? But I will go and return to my place. Uh -huh. They acknowledge the offense and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. In their affliction, they will seek me early because the Lord will bring affliction now that you have been what? You were given, you were given the message to identify the problem and examine it. Okay? Now you are given another, another, you are, you are, the Lord is extending another hand for you to acknowledge it. And say, yes, that's me. But guess what? The nation of Israel, that's what we do. We, we don't we acknowledge it. No, we don't acknowledge it. Instead, we make excuses instead of acknowledging it. This is where brothers and sisters get stuck because they don't, you don't want to acknowledge. Instead of acknowledging, you make excuses, you justify yourself. What makes you think the plague, the affliction is going to go away? It will not go away. Now the most is mad as hell now. You understand? Because now you are stubborn. Another idol you are choosing to worship. Because you don't want to acknowledge the sin. Because you are what? Full of excuses. Give me that in Sirach 37 verse 4. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 37 verse 12. No, no, 32 17. I'm sorry. 32 17. Ecclesiastes chapter 32 verse 17. Mm -hmm. A sinful man will not be approved, but findeth an excuse according to his will. You see that thing? According to his own wicked imagination, he's going to find an excuse. He's, instead of acknowledging it, you will find excuse. You will try to, you will try to, you understand, to batter it. No. Take it as it is and fix it the way that it is. You understand? A sinful man is telling you the characteristics of uh, somebody that makes excuses. This is a sinful man and a woman. Okay? A sinful man will not be reproved. They will not be received correction. Because when, in, for you to acknowledge, that means you are receiving the correction. You are taking it. But find it an excuse. They will always try to find ways to justify themselves according to his own wicked imagination. Jump back up. Read verse 14. Sarah 32 verse 14. Ecclesiastes 32 verse 14. Read. Right? Whoso feareth the Lord will receive his discipline. Will what? Will receive his discipline. You're going to receive the discipline of the Lord. You're going to receive his laws. You're going to receive his reproof, his correction, his chastisement. You will receive it because you fear the Lord. But many of you, you don't fear the Lord. That's why when correction comes, you don't want to receive it. And how do you do that? You make excuses for it. Read on. And they that seek him early shall find favor. You see that thing? If you seek him early, you're going to find favor. You're only going to find favor if you acknowledge it. Go back to Hosea 5.15. We're coming back here. Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. I will go and return on to my place till they acknowledge the offense and seek my face in their affliction, they will seek me early. You see that part right there? In their affliction, they will seek me early. Go back to Sarah 32, verse 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 32, verse 14. Whoso feareth the Lord 
will receive his discipline. And they that seek him early shall find favor. But in order for you to find favor, yes, you must seek him early. But you seeking him early, that means what you have done. There's something that you must do in order for you to what to seek him early. To seek him early meaning what? You must make haste. Excuse me. You must make haste. But for that to happen, something must have happened before, which is what? Acknowledgement. You need to acknowledge your offense first. Once you acknowledge it, guess what you do? You move with the spirit of hate to seek the Lord in. As you do that, the Lord, you're going to find favor in the sight of the Most High. The Lord will not place you there. But a lot of you, this is where you are stuck. Today is the day when we break the barrier. Today is the day when we break the spell. Because many of you are stuck at this point. You don't want to acknowledge it. You have identified the problems. You know about them. You know the problems in and out. But you don't want to acknowledge it. You are stuck here. You are, you are, still, stuck at ex, you are still stuck at excuse there. You understand? You are stuck at excuse there. You are waiting. You are still on that train. You don't want to leave that train. You are still stuck on it. Today is the day when we break the barrier so we can jump to what? To, re to repairing the bridge. We need to repair it. You have all the tools. You know what the problem is. You know how big the problem is. Now it's time to acknowledge so you can get to repair the problem, to fix, to get rid of your sins too, so the Lord can pass them up. That is what the Lord is looking for. Read that again, verse 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 14. Whoso feareth the Lord will receive his discipline, and they that seek him early will, shall find favor. Next verse. He that seeketh the law shall be filled therewith, but the hypocrite will be offended thereat. You see that thing? Because the hypocrite will be because that the hypocrites are those that become offended. And when they are offended, guess what they do? They find excuses. They make excuses. They justify themselves. Read that again, verse 15. Ecclesiastes chapter 32, verse 15. He that seeketh the law shall be filled therewith. You're going to be filled with wisdom. If you seek the law, you're going to be filled with wisdom. Read. Really? But the hypocrite shall be offended thereat. The hypocrite will be offended. That's why you get stuck. You don't want to acknowledge. You always get stuck here. You always get stuck at step two when you're supposed to acknowledge because when, when, you, you are, when you're supposed to acknowledge, which is the next step, instead of you acknowledging, you make excuses because you are offended. But you don't want, you are hiding the fact that you are offended. Why are you offended? Because you don't want to depart from that state. And because you don't want to depart from that state, part of that reason is because you don't want to acknowledge the fact that that's you. You don't want to acknowledge the fact that you have that demon. You don't want to acknowledge that thing. Because you don't want to face yourself. You are afraid of your own self. You are standing in your own way. Because you are self-willed. Read that again, verse 15. Ecclesiastes chapter 32, verse 15. He that seeketh the law shall be filled therewith. But the hypocrites will be offended thereat. The hypocrite will always be offended. That's why I said immediately they are offended. You have no need. Immediately you are offended. You are looking at the natural face. You understand? And immediately, straightway, you be forgetting what manner of man you are. That's what James chapter 1 was saying. Okay? Where did you read that? James chapter 1, verse 23. Chapter 1, verse 24. Mm -hmm. James 1, 24. Immediately, he forget what manner of man he was. He forget. But do you really forget? No. It's because you are offended, because you are a hypocrite. Okay? Read on. Verse 15. They that fear the Lord shall find judgment and shall kindle justice as a light. You see that thing? If you fear the Lord, you're going to find judgment. You're going to find the righteous judgment of the Lord. You're going to find it within his law. Okay? and shall kindle justice as a light. Because guess what? You are going to be moving in the right spirit to bring forth what? Justice and judgment to your people because you have acknowledged it in yourself and you are fixing it or have fixed it already. Read on. 
a sinful man will not be reproved, but find it an excuse according to his will. You see that thing? That's why many of you, brothers and sisters, you are stuck here in excuses. You are stuck at excuse here, and you are making those excuses on a daily basis. Every chance you get when you when the scriptures are brought up, you always have to find a safety net called excuses, and you jump on that safety net. You understand? That's a self-destructive spirit. That's a self-destructive behavior when you do that. Whenever you hear somebody making excuses, they have a self-destructive behavior. That self-destructive tendency, that's what they have. Because we read in Hosea 5.15, it says, um, in their affliction, meaning the Lord will afflict them. In Leviticus 26, okay, verse, 20, verse 21, verse 23, verse 25, we read the same thing. The Lord will plague you seven times more. We still don't get it. You wonder why you're always, you always have mental hang-ups. You're always worried. You are always confused. You understand? There's always confusion. Why? Because you don't want to acknowledge your offense. And the Lord will bring confusion to you. That's what the, the Lord will make you to be confused. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Psalms, chapter 32, verse 5. Give me Psalms 32, verse 5. Psalms chapter 32, verse 5. Read. I acknowledged my sin unto thee. I do what? I acknowledged my sin unto thee. I acknowledge my sin. I acknowledge my sin unto thee. You see that thing? This is the beginning of the healing process. Acknowledging. Taking accountability for your sin. Taking responsibility for your sin. Go ahead. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. Read. Really? Hold on. Because when you don't acknowledge, you think you are hiding your sins from the Lord. He is called the Almighty for a reason. But because you don't believe he's the Almighty, you think you can hide your sins from the Most High. The Lord, the Lord is, he wants us to acknowledge our offenses. Once you acknowledge, guess what the Lord gives you? He gives you the spirit to repent. But a lot of you, you don't look at it like that. Acknowledging it means, hey, that means it makes me look weak. No, you, you dumb. When you acknowledge it, guess what the Lord does? The Lord opens the next blessing, which is what? He gives you a chance to repent now. But a lot of you, that's not how you see it. You are still moving with the spirit of the world. Like if you apologize, it makes you look weak. No, when you are, when you don't apologize, that makes you weak. That makes you look weak. You understand? Read that again. Psalm 32, verse 5. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin, Salah. You see that thing? It says, I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. The only time when the Lord will give you the spirit to repent, because when you repent, that's when the Lord forgives you. The only time that blessing will be given unto you, you must acknowledge it. As long as you don't take accountability and responsibility and keep it a hundred, guess what's going to happen? The most High God will not give you, will not, will not forgive you. Because the forgiveness will only come when you what? When you acknowledge and the Lord opens up the spirit to do what? For you to repent. Then he forgives you. He blocks out, he blocks out, he blocks out your sin. But a lot of you, you don't want the Lord to blot out your sin. So you're carrying them around if it is some kind of a crime. That does not make any sense. When you read the Bible, it doesn't make no sense. But that's what men and women do in the truth. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Psalms 51, verse 3. Psalms chapter 51 and verse 3. Psalms chapter 51, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For I acknowledge my transgressions 
and my sin is ever before me. You see that thing? The Lord wants us to acknowledge it. Says, For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. You must acknowledge your transgressions. Otherwise, your sins will always be before you. You will always be reminded. You will always be reminded of the sins that you are in. Always. Because again, you don't want to acknowledge it. Because you acknowledging it, guess what? The Lord gives you the spirit to repent and that demon leaves. But a lot of you, you don't want the demon to leave. You are holding on to the demon. You don't want to let it go. Because you don't want to let it go because you think you can hide your transgressions from the Lord. We just read in Psalm 30, Psalm 32 verse 5. We read it in Psalm 32 verse 5. You must acknowledge it. Here we are reading it again. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. If you don't acknowledge it, your sin will always be before you. You will always be reminded all the time. So what, what, what type of mindset is that? That's a self-destructive mindset. Okay? You have a self, that means you have a self-destructive mindset. That's why. That's what the Lord is teaching us here. That's what David is saying. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Watch this. Give me the book. Mm. Let me see if I want to go there. I'm not going to be able to go there because I'm looking at the time. Okay. Um, no, I'm not going to go over this now. I won't go out table it. Give me one second. I shall table this particular one also. Okay, watch this. Now, let's deal with the next part now. Let's deal with the next step. The next and final step. Repairing the bridge now. To repair. Now it's time to repair. We've identified it. We've examined it. Okay? And we understand the impact that it has. Now we acknowledge it. Now, because we have acknowledged it, the Lord gives us the spirit to do what? To fix it. Now the Lord gives us the spirit to fix it so that this, that demon can leave. Watch this. Give me the book of Second Ezra chapter 9. Second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 36. Second Ezra chapter 9 verse 36. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 36. For we that have received the law perish by sin, and our heart also which received it. Say that again. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 36. For we that have received the law perish by sin, and our heart also which received it. It says, For we that have received, for we that have received the law perish by sin. Because the laws of God was given to us. One of those laws that was given to us was to do what? Was to acknowledge our offenses so we can repent. But because we don't want to acknowledge, we don't, we don't want to acknowledge so that those, those, those sins can be perished from us. Guess what? It says we perish by sin. We die. The most that God, he plagues us. He destroys us. He puts us under the hands of our enemies. You see that thing? For we that have received the law, we've received the law, and we boast about the fact that the laws of God was given to us, the Bible was given to us. But because we don't apply it, we perish by sin. And our heart also, we should receive it. Our mind, our, not only do we perish physically, but mentally, we also perish. Okay? We perish mentally as well. Spiritually, we perish. We die. Give me that in Proverbs 21, verse 16. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16. Read that. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16. Read. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding mm -hmm. shall remain in the congregation of the dead. You see that thing? Wandering. You just be wandering out of the way of understanding. Could you imagine it's like a headless chicken. You cut the, the head of a chicken and you let it go. You don't drain the blood. You cut the head 
and you let it go, just be wandering all over, you understand, eating things and all that. That's the state of the mind of the black man and the black woman who don't want to acknowledge. Because once you acknowledge it, you are not going to be that headless chicken. Because your sins are going to make you to wander up and down more. That's what your sins will do. Your sins will make you a laughing stock because you don't want to acknowledge them. They will make they will make you a laughing stock. That's what they will do. They will make you a laughing stock. Read that again. Verse verse uh, verse sixteen. Proverbs twenty one verse sixteen. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Okay, go back to Second Ezra nine thirty six. Second Ezra chapter nine verse thirty six. For we that have received the law perish by sin, and our heart also which received it. Read that again. Second Ezra chapter nine verse thirty six. For we that have received the law perish by sin, mm -hmm. and our heart also which received it. You see that thing. So we need to do what? We need to now that we have acknowledged it. We need to now what? Jump. We need to move to the next stage of doing what? Of repairing the situation. Because only the Lord will open that gate for us to fix our problems, to fix the cracks, to address the fractures in our life, which is our sin. Okay? The Lord, that, that's the only time when the Lord will allow us to do that. He will he is the one, He's the only one that will open that gate. But a lot of us, we don't think about it like that. We're always thinking, no, me, 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 me. It's about me. No. Once you do it, guess what? Other brothers and sisters, they also get affected by that good spirit that you are acknowledging and you are repenting, you are applying. Then you grow. You see that thing? You become an inspiration to your brothers and sisters. Watch this. Um, give me the book of Isaiah. Give me Isaiah 58 verse 12. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 12. Okay? We, we need to repair the bridge now. Okay? This is the final step. Because I know, brothers and sisters, you are stuck. Many of you are stuck at step two. It's time to move on to step three. We understand now, when you are stuck on stage two, the real reason why you are stuck at stage two is because you make excuses for your sin. That's why you are stuck at stage two. Okay? That's the root cause. Now that you have identified the root cause why you are stuck at stage two, it's time to move on to the next stage. Okay? Isaiah 58, verse 12. Read that. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 12. Wait. And he that shall be of thee mm -hmm. shall build the old waste places. Shall what? Also, shall build the old waste places. Is a day that shall be of thee. These are the men and women that decided, you know what? I'm acknowledging my sins. Now it's time for me to repent because what, what, you, what you brothers and sisters need to realize is this. When you identify your sins, you examine them, and then you acknowledge them, and then you now fix them. Guess what the next stage is? Now, the Lord will give you the opportunity to teach his people. To become that doctor, to become the therapist of the Bible. To become that, to become that engineer of the Bible. But some of you don't look at it like that because you are selfish. The spirit of selfishness is the spirit of excuses. When you make excuses, it's because you are selfish. You don't care about your people. You only care about yourself. Because if you care about your people, guess what you will do? You will move with the spirit of hate to want to get yourself together because the nation of Israel is waiting for you to get yourself together. Because you are not here to learn just for yourself. You are learning for yourself, but also for your nation that are without you too. A lot of you, you, know, you are not nation-minded. It's all about self. That's not the spirit of Christ. Read again, verse 12. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 12. Read. And he that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. You see that thing? Once you, what, hold on. Once now you've acknowledged it and then you are fixing it, guess what, you, what the Bible is saying? They that shall be of thee, there's those of you that decided, you know what, I'm going to take responsibility and accountability by acknowledging my sins so I can fix them. Because I'm, we are the ones that are going to be building the old waste places. 
We are going to resurrect our sons and daughters in the spirit of the Black Messiah, Jesus Christ. Come on. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. You see what the job is? We are going to be raising up the foundations of many generations. Generations to come. Wait. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach. The what? The repairer of the breach. The repairer of the breach. Because what you, want, what you need to understand is that when you examine yourself, acknowledge and fix yourself, guess what happens? You become a repairer of the breach. Because the breach that you are repairing within yourself is not only just for yourself. It's not about, give me that in Sirach. Okay, give me the, the book of Sirach 33, 17. It is Yasika, chapter 33, verse 17. Is that? Ecclesiastes chapter 33, verse 17. Consider that I labored not for myself only, mm -hmm. but for all them that seek learning. You see that thing? It says, consider, think that I labored not for myself only. So you laboring to identify, to acknowledge, and to repair is not just for yourself. But he says, but for all them that seek men, our brothers and sisters that are wandering from place to place, you understand, from mountain to hill, Christianity, Islam, democracy, politics, that's what our people are doing. They are wandering up and down in these, all these philosophies that men made up. Your job is to what? Is to bring them back to the to what? To the spine. So they can what? They can find their way back home. Because our people, we are the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So now, when, when you understand that our people is lost, you're going to move with the spirit of hate. You're going to move with the spirit of gravity. You are going to have gravity in your in your decision making, in your action, because you understand the nation of Israel is waiting for me out there. This is not about me. Okay? Go back to where you were there. Isaiah 58, verse 12. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 12. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. Come on. And thou shalt be called. The repairer of the breach. We are the repairer of the breach. We are the repairer of the breach. Read on. The restorer of paths to dwell in. You see that thing? The restorer of the paths to dwell in. Because we're going to restore the paths for our people to dwell in. The path of righteousness. Our job is to restore those paths. Because our people today, they are lost in Christianity. They are lost in politics. They are lost in Egyptology, Scientology. Whatever theology is out there, our people are lost in there. Our job is to restore the path for our people to dwell in. How do we do that? We, 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 are, we repair the sins, the cracks in our life. Because when we do it, it's for our people, it's for the benefit of your people. That's how you have to look at it. So it's time for you to not to be stuck at excuse you no more. Them days are over. Okay? The repairer of the bridge, because there's a bridge between us and the most high God. A lot of you don't think about that thing. There is a bridge between us and the Lord. Give me that in Jeremiah chapter 5. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah 5 verse 25. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 25. Your iniquities have turned away these things. And your sins have withholding good things from you. You see what the Lord is saying? Okay. Your iniquities have turned away these things. And your sins have withholding good things from you. So because we did not, we don't want to follow these steps yet. That's the reason why now there's a bridge between us and the Lord. You understand? There is a bridge between us and the most High God because of what? Because we do not want to acknowledge our offenses and repent. We don't want to do that. We don't. Because let me tell you. Think about it like this. Okay. When you don't want to acknowledge. And take responsibility for, your, for yourself. For your sins. For the cracks that are in your life. Guess what you don't want. You don't want to be responsible for raising up your nation. You really need to think about the, the mind of the Negro. They think very quickly. The repairer of the bridge, the restorer of paths to dwell in. That means now I have to be a leader in Israel. 
I have to be responsible, not just for myself, but for the whole nation of Israel. When you think about that, now you start to realize that means I have to now, I have to be responsible now. I have to be, I'm now, I'm, I must, I must grow up because black men don't want to grow up. Black women don't want to grow up. No, they don't want, they want to remain children void of responsibility. They don't want to grow up because when you become the repairer of the bridge, that means you are a leader. Okay? You are a restorer of the past to dwell in. That means the people you are accountable now. Your job is to make sure that you guide the whole nation of Israel. Men and women don't want that thing. Give me that in First Maccabees chapter 3, verse 43. First Maccabees chapter 3, verse 43. They said one to another, let us restore the decayed estate of our people and let us fight for our people and the sanctuary. Read that again. First Maccabees chapter chapter 3, verse 43. They said one to another, let us restore the decayed estate of our people. Stop right there. And let you us see when it says, the restorer of past to dwell in? The restorer of past to dwell in. Because you have to now understand that this is the state of our people. It says, let us restore the decayed estate of our people. You are in the state of decay, but the Lord has had mercy upon you to what? To help you to get rid of the decayed estate, your rotten spirit, your rotten mind, the filth that exists in your mind. The Lord is giving you what? He's giving you a clean glass of water to wash that away. So you can what? You can have a sound mind to go and restore the decayed estate of your people because the Lord saw you in your decayed estate. The Lord had mercy on you to wake you up. You decide to sit down, to put your hands in your pocket and be popping gum. That's the mind of the Negro. You're not sitting down to think, the Lord had mercy upon me to do this for me. Now you must do the same thing for your fellow men, for your fellow brethren, for your king's men, according to the flesh. Your job is to do that for your people, but you don't want that. This is not about you. Your job is to go out there and restore the decayed state of your people and what? And fight for your people and the sanctuary. You must fight for the laws of God. You must stand up for righteousness. Give me the book of Revelation chapter 11 verse 8. Because the reason why you brothers and sisters, you are stuck, at, you are stuck on stage 2 is because you don't really want to be responsible for the, your nation. You don't really love your people if you really need to examine. If you have to be honest with yourself, you don't really love your people. You don't. Revelation chapter 11 verse 8. Now let me show you the state of your people that the Lord called you here for. Watch this. Revelation chapter 11 verse 8. Revelation chapter 11 verse 8. Come on. And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city. You see that part right there? And their dead bodies. That's the state of the black man and the black woman and child. They are dead bodies because we are spiritually dead. We, have, we are in our decayed estate. That's the state. That's the problem. This is now the problem that you have to, you have to solve. This is the problem we are given. Guess what? The decayed estate, he says, they are dead bodies. That's the decayed estate of your nation. But that, that, cause that's supposed to be the driver. The state of your people is supposed to be the driving point, the driving factor why you're supposed to get yourself right. The reason why you are still dragging your feet is because you don't have your nation in mind. You only have your lust in mind. That's why you are taking so long, you are just dragging your feet. You are not nation-minded. You are self-minded. You don't care about the nation. This is nation-building time. You better be nation-minded. Read it again. Revelation chapter 11. And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Now watch this. The decayed state of our people. We read about that in Proverbs 21, 16. Okay, that's Maccabees 340, uh, 343. We read about that in the book of the Maccabees. It's saying the same thing. Because once we now start to understand that this is about the nation, we must be nation-minded. 
Read verse 12, read verse 11. This is the work that needs to be done. Because when once we go out there, and before we go out there, we must deal with ourselves. We must repair the cracks in our life. We must repair the raptures in our life. The, the split, the breach in our life, the sins, we must take them out. Only the Spirit of the Lord can help us to do that thing. Verse 11, watch this. Revelation 11, verse 11. And after three days and a half, the spirits of life from God entered into them. Mm -hmm. And they upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. He says, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. That means when you don't want to get yourself right, you don't want your nation to rise up. That's the spirit behind it. You don't want your nation to rise up. You don't want your nation to be honorable. You don't you you like the state the state of your nation the way that it is at the bottom. Being trodden, we've been being trodden down underfoot. Because you like when you are you like it when you are on the street. You, you like it when you've laid your body on the street as the ground to them that went over. You like that. So just because you are okay with that by yourself, it doesn't mean it's okay for your nation to be like that. The reason why you don't move with the spirit of hate again is because you don't love your people. Give me that in Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 4. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 4. Moses commanded us a law. You know what? Start verse 3. Start verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 3. Yea, he loved the people. He did what? He loved the people. You see that thing? Most, the reason why Moses did what he did because he loved his people. That's why when he was called, when he saw that Benny Bush, guess what happened? He decided, you know, let me check this out. What's this? Why is the bush burning like this? Guess what? When we go to the street corners to teach the gospel, we are that burning bush. And our people are taking note of it. The same way Moses took note of that burning bush. And once he was, that's when the Lord called him. And he got himself together. Okay? Because of what? Read verse 3 again. Deuteronomy chapter 3 verse 3. Verse 3. Wait. Wait. He loved the people. Mm -hmm. All his saints are in thy hand. And they sat down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive of thy words. You when he says they sat down at thy feet, meaning what? To learn. When Moses was teaching the law, they, they were learning the law. He was teaching them the law the same way Moses was taught by the Most High. Is the same thing that the people was also doing. Those that were what? Those that also moved in the same spirit that Moses was moving in. They loved the people. That's the spirit. The reason why you are stuck at stage two is because you don't love your people as much as you thought you did. Because if you love your people, guess what you're going to do? You're going to do, you're going to follow after the footsteps of our forefathers, what Moses did. He loved the people. What Jeremiah did, what Ezekiel did, what Joshua did, what Christ did, because he had the love for his nation. So you getting yourself together is not just about you. It's about the nation of Israel. All right? It's about the nation of Israel. That's how you, that's how you become that repairer of the bridge. That repairer of the bridge, it starts with you. Once you fix the bridge within you, then you will become the, you become the repairer of the bridge for the whole nation of Israel. To, to what? To cover the naked. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 58, Isaiah 58 and verse 7. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 7. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? That's the job. And that The job is you must deal your bread, the bread to the hungry. The bread is the Bible. Teach the people the laws of God. That's why you are saved. The Bible says, that's what we read. Okay, in Isaiah 58, verse 12, he says you're going to be the repairer of the bridge, to the restorer of paths to dwell in. Our people right now, they are not dwelling in the path of righteousness. They are, they are dwelling in the path of wickedness. 
Our job is to pull them out of that path of wickedness and bring them into the path of righteousness in the spirit of Christ. That's the responsibility. Anybody that the Lord will choose to do that, that's somebody that must have love for their people. Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 7. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? You see that thing? You must bring the poor that are cast out of thy house. What house is that? The house of Israel. The poor of our people, they are poor in spirit. Okay, come on. When thou seest the naked. When thou what? When thou seest the naked. When thou seest the naked. Give me that in uh, Exodus 32, 24. When thou seest the naked. Exodus chapter 32, verse 24. And I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me, then I cast it into the fire. And there came out the scoff. Next verse. And when Moses saw that the people were naked. When he saw that the people was what? And when Moses saw that the people were naked. Then when he saw that the people was naked, come on. For Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. You see that thing? So the nakedness goes into what? Sin. When he saw that the people were in the midst of sin, the nakedness is the shame which goes into sin. When he saw that the people were in the midst of sin, okay, go back. Go back to Isaiah 58 verse 7. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 7. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? Come on. When thou seest the naked. When you see the naked, thou, when you see our people in the midst of sin, when you see our people with those mental hangers, go ahead. When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him. You must cover the naked. Give me that in Psalms 132. Psalms 132 verse 9. Psalms 132 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness. Come on. And let thy saints shout for joy. You see that thing? They must be covered with what? Righteousness. When you see the naked of your people, you mean they are in the midst of sin, they are lost, they are confused, okay? Your job is to cover them with the what? With righteousness. Because our people are naked in the midst of sin. They are exposed, they are vulnerable to attack. And the enemy, they are doing whatsoever they want with them. If you love your people, guess what you're going to do? You're going to consider and ponder these things and get yourself correct. You can go out there and fight the good fight. Go back to Isaiah 58 verse 7. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 7. Wait. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? Uh -huh. And that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him. Wait. And that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. He says, you must not hide yourself from your own people. How do you learn that the greatest knowledge on earth, but you are hiding yourself from your own people? Why would you hide yourself from your own people? Because you are still comfortable in your sin. That's why you are still hiding yourself from your own people. You don't want to go out there to teach your people because you don't want to get yourself right. You don't want to fix the cracks in your life. You don't want to be a man. You don't want to be a woman. You don't want to grow up. That's the reason behind it. Okay? Because the job is that thou hide not thyself from thy own people. Because our people, they hate their own people. That's why you are hiding yourself from your own people. That's why you don't want to get yourself right. That's why you are stuck on stage two. Next verse. Watch this. Verse eight. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning. Uh -huh, your light, your understanding is going to break forth as the morning. See? And thine health shall spring forth speedily. You see that thing? You're going to get help. Meaning what? The Lord is going to heal you. The more, the, as, 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 as you are he getting yourself right, going out there to heal your people, as you are healing your people, the Lord is healing you. But you don't look at it like that. Read again verse 8. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 8. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily. Mm -hmm. And thy righteousness shall go before thee. You see that thing? Thy righteousness shall go before thee. Meaning what? Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding will be before you. 
is going to be that beacon of light around you. Wait. The glory of the Lord shall be thy re reward. You see that thing? The glory of the Lord shall be thy re reward because we are going to be rewarded again in the second coming, in the second during, on the second in the second coming of Christ. Give me that in second Ezra 235. Second Ezra chapter 2, verse 35. Read that. Second Ezra chapter 2, verse 35. Read. Be ready to the reward of the king. Be ready for the what? Be ready to the reward of the king. It says, be ready to the reward of the kingdom. That's the real reward that we're going to get when the Lord returns. Wait. Be ready to the reward of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. For the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. That's why it says, so shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall bring, shall bring forth speedily. Your light, your understanding shall bring shall break forth as the morning. You see that part right there? For the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. Go back to where was that? Isaiah 58, verse 8. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 8. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, the glory of the Lord shall be thy re reward. Meaning we, we are going to be rewarded again. The reward of the kingdom that's coming. Read. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. The Lord shall what? The Lord shall answer. How many of you don't want that? It says, then shall, thy, then shall thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Why want that? We all want that, but we must Behave like it. Okay, come on. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. Mm -hmm. Come thou on. Take, if thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. That's the key right there. The putting forth of the finger. So the Lord says he's going to make all this possible if we do this, if, if thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, meaning what? To oppress one another. The putting forth of the finger, blaming others for your mishap. Not taking responsibility. Because when you take responsibility and speaking lies, it says, when you take responsibility and stop speaking lies, the Lord says, then shall thou call and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. You see that part right there? The reason why you are stuck on stage two is because of excuses. Justification for your sins. Putting forth of the finger, and speaking lies. Lying to yourself and to the most high, hiding your sins from the Lord as if the Lord can see them. That's why I say what he's saying, saying right here. That's some heavy stuff right here. Okay? So, what we went over is for you to, is for a, a, each and every one of you to examine this, to sit down with yourself and now start to deal with your own self. Okay? So, with that, we say shalom. Okay? We're going to break bread. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same man also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthy eateth and drinketh damnation to himself not discerning the Lord's body. 
for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high hand for that plant. All praise to the most high. All praise to the most high.